Thank you, Joe. Did I do that? <laughs> You're gonna roll tonight. What did I do to you? He wants one. Anything like oh. you're the cute one. I'm the bald one. I don't know. We're not going there. Um, call the meeting to order. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Here. Trustee Dadge. Trustee Guerra. Here. Trustee Ruzik. Here. Trustee Calandrello. Here. Trustee Carroll. Here. Mayor Pico. Here. Please rise for the pledge. Release of portions of executive session meetings 2007 through 2014. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to approve releasing the, for public inspection the two, uh, 2007 to 2014 portions of executive session minutes that no longer require confidential treatment. Excluding those minutes or portions thereof with the village attorney has marked and are not appropriate for release at this time. Second. The motion has been moved and second and call the roll. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Calandrell? Aye. Trustee Guerra? Aye. Trustee Ruzik? Aye. Trustee Carroll? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Approval of the November 20th, 2017 regular meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? <coughs> so I have a change to the minutes for the board comments. Can we either um, make it audio or put all of the commentary, but not a mixture of both? And then we can address the minutes at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a uh, motion for the uh, special town hall meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Carroll. I move to approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees special town hall meeting of no November 27th, 2017. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any changes to the minutes? Call the roll. Trustee Carroll. Aye. Trustee Guerra. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Ruzik. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Um, you mentioned you wanted to do the canine first? Yes. All right. We'll do Trustee Guerra's amendment afterwards. Yes. Uh, Village of Roland Park canine naming contest winner. Oh, is it on my watch? And you. Oh, then you're a man. Yes, hi. Yeah. 
Oh, right. Oh, this is the dog. Right. 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 Mr. Mayor? Trustee Guerra. I move to amend the agenda by adding as the last item under, or not the last, the next item under proc proclamations, appointments, and presentations, the Recreation Department's Summer Program Guide cover presentation. Do I have a second? Second. second. Can you read it? Go. Oh, read call the roll. roll. Trustee Guerra? Aye. Trustee Carroll? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Ruzik? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. And then, Ms. Um, Do you want to read it? Yes. We'd like to present World War II veteran Louis Bazzoli's with a framed copy of the Recreation Department's Summer Program Guide cover. The sh cover shows Mr. Pizzoli's dancing while attending the Centennial Park West concert. Thank you. 
And, and thank you very much. And I think I speak for everyone to say I appreciate your service in World War II. Um, we're all grateful for it. Dear of Illinois, Beth Centennial in the village of Orland Park. On behalf of uh, uh, the village of Orland Park, um, I would like to uh, commemorate uh, the beginning of the, the uh, year of the bicentennial for um, the state of Illinois. And uh, I know that sitting up here on our board, there's, uh, there's uh, what, five of us that remember the bicentennial of uh, <laughs> 1976. Uh, and yes. uh, some of us weren't quite here yet. Um, but there were a lot of cool events then, and there's, plan there's a lot of planned events this year um, for the state of Illinois. Yesterday was actually our 199th birthday, so our 200th year started yesterday. So the proclamation declaring December 3rd, 2017 through December 3rd, 2018 as the Illinois Bicentennial Year in the Village of Warren Park. Whereas August 26, 2018 marks the 200th anniversary of the adoption of the Illinois Constitution of 1818 at the Kaskaskia Convention and December 3rd, 2018 will mark the 200th anniversary of the state of Illinois being admitted to the Union. And whereas in 1830, the 21-year-old Abraham Lincoln arrived in the state that would one day honor him and was elected to the Illinois legislature in 1834, being reelected in 1836, 1838, 1840, and 1844 before he became president in 1860. And whereas Orland Township was formed in 1850, 20 years after Lincoln's arrival in Illinois, with the Village of Orland Park's incorporation following in 1892. And whereas the bicentennial of our statehood is an opportunity to celebrate the many cultural, economic, academic, and political contributions that Illinois and its residents have made to the nation and the world. And whereas the Village of Orland Park joins its counterparts throughout the state of Illinois and will observe the year-long bicentennial celebration through December 3, 2018. Now, therefore, I, Keith Peacock, President of the Village of Orland Park, in the counties of Cook and Will, do hereby proclaim December 4th, 2017, through December 3rd, 2018, as the Illinois Bicentennial Year in the Village of Orland Park, calling on all members of the community to celebrate our beloved land of Lincoln, the great state of Illinois. Community Pride Award 2017 Marist High School Girls Volleyball State Championship winners.
Ready? Community Pride Award 2018 National Merit Scholarship Program Semifinalist. Good for you. <laughs> Community Pride Award, Liam Coglin, perfect ACT score. Consent agenda. Consent agenda, item A, payroll for November 17th to 2017th approval. <clears throat> item B, accounts payable from November 21st, 2017 through December 4th, 2017 approval. Item C, an ordinance amending Title VI, Chapter 2, Section 2-10 of the Orland Park Village Code regarding parking and repairing of motor vehicles, ordinance amendment. Item D, professional engineering services with Christopher E. Burke approval. Item E, electrical code amendments, Title V, Chapter 3 ordinance. Item F, Fees for Permits and Inspections, Title V, Chapter 2, Ordinance. Item G, Build Orland, Fiscal Year 2018. Item H, Twin Towers, Chapel Roof, Appearance Improvement Grant. Are there any changes to the consent? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Calendrell. I move to approve the consent center A through H. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Calendrello. 
Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Guerra. Aye. Trustee Ruzik. Aye. Trustee Carroll. Aye. Mayor Peacock. Aye. Approval of an ordinance for the property conveyance and donation agreement of real property located at 13901 LaGrange Road. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Ruzik. Could I get an ordinance number, please? 5248. I move to pass ordinance number 5248 entitled an ordinance authorizing an acquisition exchange of real estate and approving a property conveyance and donation agreement for the donation of real property located at 13901 LaGrange Road, Giannakis, and I move to authorize the village manager to approve and execute any necessary documents pertaining to this agreement and conveyance. Second. Are there any questions? The motion is put as read. Call the roll. Trustee Ruzik. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Guerra. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Carroll. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Sponsorship partner program approval. Okay, so um, we are pleased to sit and discuss with you some of our ideas for the 2018 sponsorship partner program approval. Um, what we'd like to do today is gain your insight and direction as we move forward with some of the ideas we've put together. Um, in your green package, you had um, a silver folder that we put in there Friday, as well as the PowerPoint presentation we have today. What I'm going to do is give a very brief overview, and then Jill's going to take it from there to kind of talk through some of the detail. Um, staff has been successful over the, the past several years of increasing our revenue with our grassroots businesses. Um, we've increased our revenue by 18%. Um, to date, we've for this year, we've brought over $100,000 in sponsorship revenue, and that's just through this um, sponsorship packet that we use for our local businesses in our community. So we've been we've been very successful. I think we're on. Can you guys hear me? There you go. Now I just want to start singing. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so um, in an effort to do that, again, we're, we're pretty proud of our accomplishments. However, with 2018 budget process, as our, our chairman has stated before, we need to start stepping it up in terms of bringing in more revenue. Um, and we have some ideas to do that. We've reached out to other park districts, villages, and rec departments to understand how they're able to capture those larger companies um, for those bigger name sponsors. Um, with that research, we determined that in order to do that, we have to be flexible. Um, we have to be able to sweeten the pot. We have to give and take. And um, with that being said, we have to customize our comprehensive sponsorship packages based on the business's needs. And that's through dialogue and discussion. And sometimes it's fairly quick, maybe a couple weeks. Sometimes it takes a year to, to garner that sponsorship. Um, during the research, we met with <coughs> Sue Lynn who is an industry marketing professional. Sue has experience with Moraine Valley Community College and Palos Hospital. Um, we sat down and presented all our findings and where we were at with her just to get her professional take on it. And she absolutely said, continue with what you're doing with the community grassroots sponsorship. And yes, she agreed, we need to move forward um, and really create that outreach to those higher level sponsorships. Um, also, what we've been looking at too, um, as I've spoke to um, Assistant Village Manager Carrie Freiling, we're looking at enhancing this, broad, once we get this off the ground, enhancing this as a village-wide sponsorship program. Eventually, we need to look at all the departments because the departments do um, look for grants and sponsorships, and we don't want to be double-hitting anybody. We want to be conscientious of that. So we want to sit down together and understand who's doing what. So once we get this off the ground, um, our next steps will be moving towards that. Um, so again, before I hand it to Jill, just thinking about the end in terms of what we're trying to get to, we're looking at um, creating a premier sponsorship program for example, Taste of Orland, Fourth of July celebration by creating a customized comprehensive package utilizing village assets. And we have those assets for you. Um, sponsorship naming rights to village entities. For example, at the fitness center, maybe the weight room is named after a business or maybe the gym is named after a business for a certain dollar amount. If any of you are familiar with Moraine Valley, the Blackhawks um, partnered with Moraine Valley and that whole fitness center is, has Blackhawks everywhere. And that took a year to get there but it was instrumental in getting that fitness center off the ground. And then finally, a reception. Um, we, we need your help. Um, you guys have contacts that we want to work together with. So um, Sue Lynn had advised you know, doing a reception where you can have a meet and greet with, say, 
our top 25 sponsors that have some interest or were interested in, and maybe having you guys there um, being able to shake hands and talk with our, our potential sponsors to open up those doors. Um, in addition to that, we also looked at some one-on-one -on -one meetings. So um, with that being said, I'm gonna hand it over to Jill as she's done a tremendous job in doing the research and putting this project together. Hi. Um, I'm excited to be able to share with you what I've learned. Um, I did some homework and I kind of checked out about 35 initially, 35 municipalities and park districts. Uh, we narrowed it down to the ones we really um, thought were doing a great job and we, we wanted to model. Um, we learned about six things that we thought if we could take this um, back to the village and use these. Um, the first one was business partnerships are real relationships. So this isn't, um, let's, let's get you to sponsor one event. Thank you, Joe. Um, let's get you to sponsor this event and then you know maybe we'll call you next year. This is an ongoing relationship, um, catering to their needs as well as ours and just this ongoing relationship. So we, are, we really wanna be good partners. Uh, designated staff, um, just one staff mem member generally met with these uh, business partners. So it wasn't, a, you know, seven, ten different entities um, within the park district or municipality. We were all on the same page, so multiple people were not constantly reaching out. Flexibility to customize sponsor uh, packages. This was really important, and this is a really important facet for our relationship with businesses, because not every business is the same. And our sponsorship packages um, can um, be, you know, we can work well with them, but other businesses um, it wouldn't work for. So um, that was another important feature that we wanted to be able to um, utilize. Offering higher level packages, we realized we aren't getting higher level packages because our um, sponsorships because we're not asking. So um, it's just, it's pretty much that simple. So our highest level um, for the Taste of Orland is $5,000. So we would love to be able to offer a package like a $10,000, 20, 50. The Taste of Joliet secured the last two years of sponsorship for $100,000 from Darcy Motors. Um, it's a little bit of a bigger event, but I think we can do a little better than $5,000. Naming rights is another really exciting opportunity. I don't know. Um, where or how you feel about this, but uh, we could really be on the front end of this. Uh, our area doesn't do too much of it, but there are many park districts and municipalities that are offering it right now. Rockford is on their third um, very successful partnership. You know, we see stadiums and 80% of all professional stadiums now have um, sponsors. And um, I think the last thing that was really important uh, to realize is that we're a little bit behind the eight ball. Our sponsorship packet usually comes out in January. Well, most of the park districts that I spoke with already have all their sponsors secure for 2018. Um, businesses already are, have allocated their marketing money last year for this next year. So um, we will do our best, but we are, again, behind. So that's another thing we would like to be able to do is offer sponsorships all year. Um, once we... Excuse, sorry. Once we got to the, um, oh, sorry. Thanks, Joe. You were ahead of me on that one. We realized we don't really even know what we have to offer. So we did a comprehensive um, building by building um, spreadsheet. What are our assets? We don't even really know what we have to offer. So we got a little creative and um, went through and just itemized every possible asset that we have in terms of marketing. We did the outdoor and the indoor venues, and we also um, went through each special event and went through and figured out what do we have that would be appealing for a business. The other thing that was very important um, to businesses is what is our reach? This is the first time we actually put all of our numbers together in one place. Um, we did our um, how many annual web page views, our print media, our emails, and then we also were able to um, add all of our numbers because we not only have um, the Village of Orland Park, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but we also have a recreation social uh, media um, presence. So we added those numbers together and it, they're really impressive numbers. So just getting them on paper was thrilling. Um, and the other thing we did was once we got all this information down, we created um, a folder like Director Flores said, and um, we put together all this information in a letter. We also included testimonials um, of our sponsors and also attendees of our events. 
So moving in that direction, we, it, it was pretty fun. We had some fun with this. And we also went ahead, and, um, and of course, this is all hypothetical. There's nothing set in stone. But we went ahead and created some higher level packages. The Taste of uh, Orland, we decided to check this out, do the presenting sponsor. Now, a presenting sponsor isn't a title sponsor, so we won't lose our identity. But we would say offer Taste of Orland Park presented by, whether that would be a car dealership, we don't know. Um, but that's how that would work. And then if you look, uh, most of these things that we're offering are not a lot of money, but they're very valuable to businesses. One of the newer items that are um, very important to businesses are category exclusivity. So going back to, say, a car dealer sponsored the Taste of Orland for $50,000, they would be the only car dealer at that event. And, and that seems to be um, what other park districts seem to offer, and it's a very valuable asset. Um, if you look, there is um, at the bottom, there's a graphic that actually can be on concrete and just another low cost way of um, offering a business marketing tool. Um, if you notice, we offer um, an assigned Village of Orland Park staff getting back to our catering and having this relationship, meeting their needs, even at on site events is very important and an added um, bonus for them and us so we can be in constant communication. Another major sponsor, a $20,000 package. If you notice, again, not, not a lot of cost on our end, but very valuable assets. Um, a logo on our um, Village of Orland Park website to assign volunteers. Uh, right of first refusal isn't something we've really done before, but that is another valuable asset. If it's um, going well and they're happy with the event, they'll have first dibs on next year's um, event as well, which is great for us too. So these, um, everything we're, we're talking about is just great for everyone. Getting into naming rights, if you see the pictures, our graphic designer did some um, possibilities for events. And also, if you see um, our weight area at Sportsplex, um, just a space where they can have their logo and branding. We have over 30 events in programs, including our after school pals, day camp programs. And as I saw the lights outside in front, it doesn't quite fit into an event program or facility, but those holiday lights we have out there that exhibit would be perfect for a sponsor. Who knows, maybe even a utility would be interested in sponsoring us next year. And then as far as few, uh, utilities, if, I mean, excuse me, facilities, if we're not ready to put a name on a building, there's also opportunities for spaces within buildings, a weight room or a dance room. So the opportunities are really endless. Uh, one of the next um, important features that we're hoping that we could have is a little bit more flexibility. Um, each business, again, is looking for something different. We recently met with um, an orthopedic practice in Orland Park, and they really, their goal is to get um, a 30 to 40 demographic age group. They have a great senior um, area, but they're looking for 30s to 40s. So they came out and they actually sponsored um, our turkey trot, and they were thrilled with the FaceTime because that's important for them. So um, other businesses, they don't have the staff to stretch and to be at the Taste of Orland Park. So again, it's, it's um, very important to be able to customize these things. And then once we make a, create a package, and there's, there's going to be times where we're maybe not going to be able to close the deal. So it's important to be able to have these add-on opportunities. And here's a list of just creative ways to close that deal so there's no money left on the table. And again, tasting, sampling booths, um, there's an area, a municipal pool, that has a Tide. Tide is their sponsor, and they set up a table and they hand out samples, and everyone loves that day. So um, another opportunity is a team building experience at one of our um, buildings, like the Sportsplex. During the day, a weekday, why not have uh, offer a corporate um, group to come out and do their day there? We can, we'll build it, they can build it, they can have a free reign of space. Um, but our goal is to meet their needs as well. And again, category exclusivity and right of, um, first refusal, just opportunities to close these deals. So tonight we're just requesting um, that the board would approve um, these, the following. Flexibility to create and customize comprehensive sponsorship packages, offer presenting sponsor opportunities at events, 
naming rights for facilities indoor and outdoor, including the possibility of future venues such as Centennial Park West Banjil. We also need your help um, with the platform. How do we do this? This is a great opportunity for many business um, sponsors in the area. Again, Director Flores shared um, that a, co a cocktail reception might be a great way to meet with our top 25 uh, or 50 um, potential business sponsors for these higher level packages, and we need your help. So we're excited, and we just hope that we can work together, and we thank you so much for this opportunity. Are there any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor? Trustee Calandrello. First of all, as the incoming Parks and Rec, first of all, I want to thank Trustee Gira. She kind of started the ball moving a little bit, and I see she's smiling like a, a mother pup over there. So um, <laughs> I, I, I want to thank her for starting the ball, and I look forward to working with everyone to, to do this. I think um, these are some great ideas, um, especially with budgets always going to be budget. I think we need to find money where we can, and these are the, 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 great, the great pots we can probably get. Um, I, a couple comments, I guess. Um, would be that I, for one, would be okay with selling off naming rights to a park for a limited amount of time, say Centennial Park for 10 years, so it would be bar, you know, Johnson Johnson Park or brought to you by Johnson Johnson. I think those take years to, to close the deal, but we could also use that money for maybe a football field or something like that. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm game for that, definitely. I think that's something we could, we could look into and I support. Um, and, and I, I just... I like where you're going. You know, if we can get a $50,000 sponsor for a taste of wine, we don't have to have the tough conversation about wristbands for beer to being $10 or non-residents. We don't have to have those very small conversations that could l limit the event. So I think it's really good. I mean, we have a lot of realtors and realtors. I'm just looking at Cindy back there. But, they, you know, we're talking, we could have Chicago White Sox do uh, donate the Centennial Park or the Cubs, Joe, whoever wants to pay. Hey, Thank whatever. You, sir. Thank you. They both have $10 million. Thank we'll you. take it. Um, but I think that's great. So I want to appreciate uh, Trustee Gira starting the ball, staff, uh, both Nancy and Jill doing a great job. And we're looking forward to it. And, and the, only, the only comment would be I would be comfortable with if I have a connection with X big company. I'll just say, hey, Jill. This is Dan. He's with Big Company X. You guys should have lunch or something like that. But I would, I think, at least for me, be I would prefer to put everything on staff once the connection is made. And, and Trustee Kellandrell, I think that's the idea is just to make those introductions to staff and allowing staff then to take it and run with it. So, and I, I will concur that Nancy and Jill have done an amazing job in putting this this together. So. Any other questions or comments? If I may, Mr. Trustee Guerra. Uh, yeah, as outgoing chairman, I have to uh, concur. N Nancy and Jill together, and Jill ran with it. Nancy entrusted her with this project, and, and they just did a fabulous job on, on the research. I think the, the point at the end that Jill was trying to make uh, that was suggested by this resident who is in this business is that perhaps we, as a board, consider hosting a uh, little cocktail party or something at the Civic Center where we could invite people in much like uh, Carrie has done at retail conventions and just make it clear what's available. We have all the screens over there that we could show the videos and have a local business come in and do a little courting. And then of course, after the in introductions are made, we turn it over to that department and let them run with it. Any other comments? So I, I have a couple comments and questions. So I think the naming rights is a great idea of, say, Centennial Park West, especially if we can uh, bring home some of the things we're talking about doing that, doing there from an event standpoint. Um, one of the things you mentioned is we're behind the eight ball. So what's the game plan for next year as far as when um, are we going to get these things in front of us so that we have this package ready to go so that we can sell it and things can be sold out by now? I think for us, we, we came up with this product. Um, we want to fine tune it a little bit. I think it's ready to go as is once we have your direction. But with our research, we also saw from other municipalities, they've got like this power sheet and it has similar to the, um, 
the um, the book that the village put out with the finances and how everything the annual report, numbers. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they kind of use that kind of method to really kind of capture those businesses high level to kind of ring them in. So I think to answer your question, we're ready to go once we get the green light from the board to move forward. And as far as next year goes, Jill's going to be working on fine tuning this and working with those relationships. So if I can make a suggestion from yes. a business perspective, <laughs> is that the the uh, what you're working on from an event by event basis, which was what are our total costs, and I'm sure part of that is going to be what's our attendance. I think if we put that together in some kind of a marketing document to them, obviously that's not going to be difficult to do for 2018, but we should have that in place for 2019. We can update it as we go and have that ready to go in the summer so we can be working on 2019. So I think you need to set a target date of when we're going to have this ready to go so that we can move forward with 2019. In other words, don't be bringing it to the board for approval in December. Right. Let's bring it to the board right. in May or June or whatever makes sense. So let's work together Absolutely. on that, okay? Absolutely. And we also included in the document, you'll see um, behind the marketing partner program, we have our demo, you know, kind of like some factoids here mm -hmm. um, with demographics and everything about Orland and some of the events. So there, I see what you're <coughs> saying. We could certainly add that. I think we have those numbers at our fingertips mm -hmm. to add yeah. to that. Okay. Sure. Um, that would be great. And then I think the other thing, too, is um, I, I would, you know, suggest working closely um, with the mayor's office on this because, as you know, I'm out there working a lot on economic development. And one of the questions that I get on a regular basis is how can we help the village? How can we contribute to the village? So if I know where we have needs for sponsorships, I can actually discuss that with them, whether you're there at the meeting or not, and then get their interest and then turn them over to you. So um, I think coordination uh, with the economic development front will be very helpful for those packages. Taste of Orland, thirty thousand dollars right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're shooting. For. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Was it thirty thousand or fifty? Uh, thirty for right now. We'll, we'll take fifty though. Let's go fifty. Let's go fifty. <laughs> we can do it. Okay. How much I just want to know. You, you, you want 50, me to name high or you want me to name low? Let's high. Let's high. Okay. Fifty thousand. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Ruzik. So my question for twenty eighteen Taste of Orland, are you going to try and find a presenting yes. sponsor? Okay. Yes. So. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, yeah, you, no, you guys have done a great job. Thank you. And with that said, I, I think the um, having the wine, and, sorry, the um, having a meet and greet at Civic Center um, with you guys and getting these business and then will will be a great step forward. It'll be something different, something unique. We have Carrie's um, video from 9750. We have PIO video promotions of a lot of our events. It would be a really good way to kind of talk about it, get the ball rolling and moving forward. With that being said, if anyone has any contacts right yes. now, uh, we are taking names and numbers, and uh, names. we'll be happy to contact to the them first thing in the morning. <laughs> any other questions? Comments? Kudos. I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Calandrello. I move to approve the sponsor partnership program for Premier of Village Defense, naming rights to <clears throat> village facilities and customize comprehensive packages and approve reception or one and one on one meetings with potential sponsors, village official and staff. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Carroll. Make a motion to amend to insert the language after naming rights to village facilities parentheses with prior board approval required individually for each facility and parentheses. Do I hear a second? Second. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. My only thought, Carroll. Thank you. My only thought is that I, I love this idea and the, and the presentation was great. It's just that we're talking about naming a village facility, which is funded with taxpayer dollars. It, it, it has to make sense from a policy perspective, so I just prefer that it be brought to the board so we could review that if it were to take place. Yeah, of course. We were going to do that anyways. So okay, I figured do, it do you, covers you. Right. Any other comments? So I agree that uh, anything with naming rights to a building, we should have approval at the board level for sure. Um, to call the roll on the amendment. Trustee Carroll. Aye. Trustee Guerra. Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Ruzick? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Any other comments on the main motion? So the main motion is, is put as read. Call the roll. 
Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Guerra? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Ruzik? Aye. Trustee Carroll? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Amend Title Seven, Chapter Four, Number of Class A Liquor License. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Rizek. I move to pass Ordinance Number Five Two Four Nine, entitled "An Ordinance Amending Title Seven, Chapter Four of the Orland Park Municipal Code, Regarding the Available Number of Class A Liquor Licenses Issued by the Village of Orland Park, Cook and Will Counties, Illinois." Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any questions? Call the roll. Trustee Ruzik? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Guerra? Aye. Trustee Carroll? Aye. Mayor Peacock? Aye. Uh, we have two speakers uh, John Mackinnon. Good evening, everybody. Um, I've got a couple of comments and some observations about uh, two things, two or three things. One of them is meeting minutes. I, I think I've mentioned meeting minutes before. Um, I, I'm, these last few months, I've been trying to keep up on, keep up with what's going on in the village. And one of the ways to try to do that is to read the, read the meeting minutes from the board or committees. It's really tough to follow. One of the reasons is, um, uh, yesterday evening, about 8 o'clock, I was trying to look at, at minutes from November 6th, November 20th. They weren't, they're not posted yet on the website. Um, the, you might say, well, the audio version is posted. If you've tried to make any sense out of that, good luck, because I, I, I kind of abandoned that after a while. There's, there's no index. It's, it's probably good for some kind of archive, some kind of um, uh, really backup information with you know, modern technology, I, I would think perhaps there's some way to have it, have it transcribed right from the recording. I, I know there's uh, software programs that can do that. Maybe that's a suggestion. But it would be helpful to have these things uh, posted in more of a, uh, a timely manner. One of the things I did notice, again, that I, I know a little bit about, I wanted to comment on, was something about um, um, I think it was voted on and approved for advertising uh, and bid procedures. Just to, uh, just to reinforce that, I think you, you, you dumped or, or eliminated uh, newspaper postings. It's a good idea. As a contractor, we don't look at newspapers. That's, that's save the money, use it for something else. So that was a good thing. <laughs> uh, the other, other item I wanted to talk about is the Bradford Theater theater development and um, along the lines of um, what I was just saying about the meeting minutes, I stumbled on the media packet, which I think everybody gets, you, you get for this meeting. That's pretty helpful. Um, I don't know if that's official or not, but um, I, I found some very interesting information there about the uh, Bradford theater development. Um, one of the, some of the things that uh, that I questioned are have to do with the cost of the the, the development. Uh, some of the comments that I read in the again on the the uh, media packet were that the uh, the building was significantly over budget originally, and the staff worked with uh, Bradford to redesign the building. I'm just curious whose budget is it? Um, was it Bradford's budget? Is it the village's budget? Um, does the village have professional estimators on staff? I don't know. Architects, engineers, contractors, where did that budget come from? And who, who really determined, or, or uh, is, is that an arbitrary comment that it's significantly over budget? I don't know what that means. One times, twice, three times over budget? Uh, it, I'd like to find out more information about that. I think it'd be interesting to hear what that is. A um, Couple other things that I found interesting about that is that um, apparently Bradford is going to pay a million dollars for this property. And there's something about uh, uh, they have a limit on the cost that they're going to be responsible for up to 150 bucks a square feet. Anything a square foot, anything over that is going to be reimbursed by the village. 
up to a million dollars. That's what I read from um, the information that's here. That works out to about $174 a square foot. What happens after that? Do we keep going, or is it if it's 200 bucks a square foot, do they eat that? Uh, there's a lot of questions there um, that uh, would be interesting to see who, who has answers to those things. But if, if, they, if the cost is 174 bucks a square foot, they get the property for nothing, essentially is the way I see it. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea. A um, couple other things. Uh, Bradford agreed to some kind of profit-sharing profit arrangement, um, and perhaps that has to do with TIF financing. I'm trying to educate myself about TIF financing. I, I'm not sure how that works, but um, similar to uh, the Mariano's development uh, that Bradford, I think, was involved with, they're getting a rebate on the sales tax up to, I think, about $1.6 million is what I determined. 50% up to $1.6 million is what we're paying or rebating to them quarterly. Why do we have to do that? I don't know. Um, so those are, those are things that uh, I think are very important. Um, why do we have to do that? Why do we have to rebate anything at all to them? Why can't it be a lesser amount? Why can't it be for a longer period of time? Is that, uh, is that what they're gonna have for the theater development as well? Um, just be interesting to find out if that's the case. Um, one of the, I thought, well, Mr. Chairman, point of order, the speaker's well beyond the time limit report, so, loud under ordinance. Okay, one more thing. Anybody so, wants to look at the Wall Street Journal last weekend, uh, Mitch Daniels had a great op-ed, a guide on how not to behave like a dunce. Um, take a look at it. I mean, that's not an insult, but it just has to do with public agencies attracting private businesses. Thanks for the time. Are there any comments or, well, uh, Mr. Collins is the next speaker. Mr. Mayor, trustees, you guys sick of me yet? <laughs> um, I actually uh, have just a couple of questions and clarifications if, if you could as we go along. Um, the executive session minutes from 2007, 2014, any idea on when those might be available? I'm assuming as, as, soon as, as soon as they get everything put together, it'll be posted on the website. How many days does that oh, take? Okay. Oh, so it'll be on the website, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing was with the Class A liquor licenses. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this is number sixty-nine that that's out there, and I didn't know if there's a cap. So the way we do Class A liquor licenses is um, they're. Currently, it's being raised to 69 to allow for another that meets all of the criteria, right. but we don't raise it unless there's somebody else who meets the criteria. Okay, so so we have con so that way we have control over the liquor license. So as long as they meet all the criteria that we set, and the liquor commissioner, which is me, right. thinks that they're going to be after meeting with them, I think they're going to be a reputable business. Then we move. I go to the board, and they raise the limit. That way, we don't have open licenses where someone can come in and and take that license, and we have less control over who comes in. Uh, and that's why I. I wasn't aware of the process. I mean, right. so is there a maximum number of licenses that for the village will be available at any particular point in time? Well, we can raise it or lower it as needed. And so, for example, if two businesses closed, we could we would drop it to 67. So hypothetically, if 35 more businesses came in wanting liquor licenses and restaurants, and, that, and if they were all doing well, that would be great for us to have 35 more restaurants in town that were all doing great. Right. We would raise the liquor licenses to meet that. So. Okay, and, and that's, that's based on their business plan that they present, the, the, the type of business that it is, I assume that that's all incorporated. Type of business, Class A liquor license requires it, uh, that their primary business is food. Okay. So they're a restaurant. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, any uh, questions or comments on the speakers? So the only comments I have is the meeting minutes on the. Oh, someone else would like. To speak. Would you like to speak? Um, you state to your name. Uh, Madeline Flaherty. Uh, I want to thank the board for the audio of the uh, the meetings. I find that interesting. Um, last week I did listen to the, the, the previous meeting uh, 
audio. And uh, I was a little, I was a little taken back. We got to the comments at the end. Um, I found that uh, Trustee Calandrella, your, your commentary was rather disrespectful, and I found it to be rather uh, a bloviating rant, quite frankly. I didn't see that there was any respect there. Um, I heard a lot about the Orland Park brand. The Orland Park brand evidently wanted to be changed, that the voters wanted it changed, or we would have continued with the same administration. Um, you know, and when you don't have a, a competitor in, in, a, in a, an election, you know, you're assured of that seat. But if you, if you had a competitor, there's no, there's no saying that you would be in that, that seat. When the voters, the voters wanted to change that brand, because there's a lot of things, and I won't go into, that, that the, the voters are very unhappy with. So we changed the brand when we elected Keith Peacock. And when you disrespect the mayor, you disrespect our vote. You diminish the vote of the, of the residents of, of Orland Park. I, I would like to see more cooperation. I'd like to see less resistance, because it seems like the, the Washington swamp is creeping in here. You know, we all need to get over the results of the election, locally and nationally. Let's, let's work together and move on. Uh, you know, and, and you talked about your power. Well, your power, everyone's power lies in the voters that gave you that power. You know, there's a lot of residents in Orland Park that are well-educated, that are professional, that are licensed, that have lots of credentials. So, mm -hmm. and you talked about the, the residents are listening. Trust me, we're, we're listening very closely. We, we have very, very astute hearing. We're, we're, we listen very well. One minute. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking that uh, maybe you should uh, come down off the high horse before you fall and hurt yourself. Because what I heard, I didn't like. I didn't care for. I thought it was disrespectful. And I think we need to leave the party politics out of this and start working together as a board. More cooperation. We need to work together, not at each other. You know, you accuse the mayor of not producing or coming across with the brand. We're tired of the old brand. That's why he was elected the mayor. So I would, I would suggest that we start working together and not at each other. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Um, any anybody that wants to comment after that? Mr. Mayor? Trustee Calandrello. I want to thank you for your comments. Say again? I wanted to thank the lady for her comments. OK. Um, so I have uh, just a couple of comments uh, from what we heard. Uh, so the November 20th minutes aren't up yet because that's what we were talking about today, so they're not approved. So that's why they're not on the website yet. November 6th, I'm not sure they should be there, I believe. Um, uh, the uh, archived. No, no, I'm. Okay, the uh, archived audio. I think that's a good suggestion to figure out if there's a way that we can index it. We talked about that. That it's hard to navigate it for two. You know, if it's two hours and forty minutes long, if we can index it in some way. And we did. We have actually already had that conversation about is there an ability within the software to make that happen? So there might be. So that's something that we'll work on. At least for now, I think the board's done a good job to get it. To get something online that's uh, that you can hear the whole meeting, which is great. Um, I do think that there's there can be improvements, but it's only been out there for a couple months, so that's part of the process. Um, uh, regarding Bradford, I do think your numbers of the 175 or six, I think that's those numbers are correct because I ran them as well. So, um, and that's all the comments that I had. Uh, ready for board comments, Trustee Gira. I would only compliment staff on our holiday festival after Thanksgiving. It was wonderful. I can't believe the turnout we had. Do you think? Yeah. Our, our staff put a whole new program together, and it was fresh. It was obviously well attended. I pulled up, and I guess the Prairie made a mistake that with the time to start that it was they maybe said 2 oh, instead of 4 it, not clear. Anyway, <laughs> when I got here, I thought I was at the Taste of Orland. It was that well attended. In the lights, our lights are wonderful. Uh, it, it just, it's a winter wonderland out there if there was a white carpet. My only concern, and unfortunately it's legitimate, it, I was contacted by some folks that came in from Frankfurt and they were concerned that there were people climbing all over the stuff. And that's unfortunate. But. Uh, it's beautiful. Staff did a fabulous job. Thank you. So. Trustee Carroll. Thank you, Chairman. 
<clears throat> most of my comments are thanking staff first of all to the staff that finally listened to me that I have a face for radio thank you for putting a plant in front of my face <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to uh, thank the staff for the parks and rec departments <clears throat> for the uh, the data they put together for our committee meeting we knew it was going to be a somewhat contentious committee meeting I think it went well I think you did a great job presenting the facts and I thank you for that uh, also I already had mentioned that I was impressed but thank you again to staff director Flores and Mrs. Hodge for the sponsorship presentation. I thought it was excellent. It really began our thought process and you did it. Obviously did a lot of work to put it together and thank you for that. And then to, to repeat what Trustee Guerra said, the overall performance on the, the tree lighting and the holiday festival was amazing. Uh, finally, I just want to pass along my condolences to the families of Trustee Dodge, Assistant Village Manager Freiling and Director Flores for their recent losses. Uh, my thoughts are with you for during this holiday season. Trustee Fenton. I um, just want to thank staff for uh, finally bringing in um, our vendors that were there um, at the uh, tree lighting event. It really worked out. That was something we had uh, talked about for a couple of years. Once again, bringing back in that Norman Rockwell or Hallmark moment and with the tree sales down there, they're doing really well and they greatly appreciate uh, being at this location. So staff did a phenomenal job and also my thoughts and prayers are with staff members who recently had losses in their family. Trustee Calendrill. I just want to repeat everyone's uh, uh, pat on the backs for all the great work that staff's been doing and also my condolences for, I know we have a lot of um, sad families and we're with you and you're all in my prayers and my family's prayers. Thank you. Trustee uh, Rizek. Again, great uh, tree lighting ceremony this year. I think since I've been here, it was probably the, the, the best attended. Um, and I think the new format helped, and our beautiful weather certainly helped, yes, too. Yes, so if you can get that every year. Um, but anyways, just kudos to staff. Can I take credit for the weather? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, most of these comments have already been made, but I do want to reemphasize them. Um, uh, Village Manager <clears throat> Margo and, and staff, you guys did a great job of handling a very difficult issue, and I know it's still, it was pretty contentious tonight, um, because you implemented what was the village board's policy which is what we ask you to do and you did it the right way you took multiple meetings multiple meetings and addressed all of their issues and you know i know issues kept popping up and even tonight a few more popped up but you guys did a great job so i want to commend you for that um also um uh, condolences to uh director freiling director flores and to uh, jim dodge who's not here tonight for their for their personal losses um i i also want to uh commend everyone on the winter wonderland it was a great event and a great job on the lights this year i will tell you that the positives and negative comments are running about 100 to 1 which is probably about opposite of last year based on what i heard in february and march so uh so great job i appreciate it because it sure makes my life and jennifer's life in the mayor's office much easier um, and then also i want to thank the police for all of their hard work um, Black Friday and all through this season, and they work extra and overtime. Their presence is noticed and it's appreciated. So, uh, in fact, the chief left early tonight because he's actually on the streets tonight. So, I want to thank the police, even though none of them are here tonight. Um, I'm sure that uh, Assistant Village Manager Keating will pass that on. With that, I'll take a motion to go to executive session. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenn. Move to go in executive session for A, approval of minutes, B, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific village employees, C, collective negotiating matters between the village and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Calendrell. Trustee Guerra. Aye. Trustee Ruzik. <laughs> Trustee Carroll. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if we could just remind that uh, Monday at 7 p.m. at the Civic Center is the second 